Hi everyone, we're at the Paris Air Show 2023 in Le Bourget and I'm now meeting with General Atomics to find out the latest about the Sea Guardian. With me today is Christophe Taras Fontaine, Vice President at General Atomics Aeronautics. Christophe, good morning. Good morning. So what's the latest with the, the Sea Guardian? There's a number of uh, recent customers uh, out there. Can you tell us more? Yes, for sure. So uh, we have uh, this aircraft first, it's operational. That's maybe the most important information to deliver to, uh, to the public. Uh, it's currently uh, flown in support to the Japanese Coast Guard uh, with, uh, with two aircraft uh, performing a maritime uh, surveillance mission in support to the, uh, to the Japanese Coast Guard. Uh, we have uh, numerous customers that are going to operate the aircraft very soon. United Kingdom, where we finish uh, the, the trials and are about to deliver the aircraft. Uh, Belgium uh, will follow. Uh, and as you know, we have also a contract already signed with uh, Taiwan. And uh, I believe uh, the JMSDF, uh, the Japanese Navy, is an upcoming uh, user as well of the Sea Guardian. So we, we hope that the trials that we are currently performing with, uh, with the Japanese uh, Coast Guard will certainly uh, make uh, the Japanese Navy also being interested. And that's discussions that are ongoing and we are optimistic that it will uh, it will end up in a positive way for, for General Atomics over there. But there are also many other navies as there, are, there is in general a requirement and an appetite for maritime surveillance. Uh, and the MQ-9BC Guardian is a currently only existing platform that, can, as that is capable to uh, collect and perform multi-domain surveillance in, ad, in addition to maritime patrol aircraft. Uh, and we, uh, we have also uh, a COCO of the previous version of, of the MQ-9B uh, operating in India and uh, the Indians are very, very happy about the, of the, this capability. We are in France at Paris Air Show. Uh, as we covered at Euronaval last year, there's an upcoming uh, requirement with the French Navy called the uh, FCMAR Phase uh, 2 or Phase 2, uh, which calls for uh, such uh, UAS to supplement uh, manned assets. Uh, can you tell us uh, more about the, the status of this and uh, can you confirm that you're still pitching the Sea Guardian to the French? So, as I just said, uh, the French Navy is not an exception. They understand that uh, uh, monitoring the French economic exclusive zone, that is the first one in the world, uh, is, uh, is, is, has to be done with multiple assets, including large uh, RPAs. It's part of the Mercator plan, as you remember. Huh? Amiral Prazuk uh, had said that every ship has to have his own, his own uh, RPA, in addition to the one operated from land. So there is an appetite, there is a requirement. You know there are some discussions currently going on at the Parliament, the French Parliament. Uh, and we hope that uh, this uh, requirement will be, uh, will be defined uh, or that some, some funds will be made available. Uh, to, uh, to perform this complementary mission to the maritime patrol aircraft with uh, MQ-9B. We as General Atomics, we are ready to deliver capability uh, for acquisition, for, for a lease to own model, uh, with French sensors or with the current configuration. Uh, and we are just waiting for the parliamentary session to finish to see uh, where we are. So that's one, one offer. Uh, and uh, you may, as you know, we are, we are also developing a capability to uh, called MQ-9B STOL, short takeoff and landing, that will, with the same airframe, uh, by changing wings and a few, and a few, uh, and a few pieces on the aircraft, to operate this MQ-9B from a flat deck. In the in, in the case of the French Navy, it would be from the Mistral class. That's possible. You kind of do studies already. You looked at it. Uh, it sea Guardian could take off and land on uh, on the missile class. Uh. So, so we have developed a demonstrator called Mojave, uh, which is a development of the MQ-1 uh, that was operated by the U.S. Army. So it has a specific wing to be capable to operate basically from a football field, okay. soccer, not uh, American football. <laughs> so that means 100 meter. So because it's short takeoff and landing. And that technology, we are going to perform some demonstrations of the uh, feasibility to operate this, uh, this aircraft from uh, aircraft carrier without catapults. 
that we don't need arresting gear nor catapults to operate this aircraft. So we're going to start with the United Kingdom uh, probably at the end of the year. Uh, and of course, every nation, and uh, you will understand that at this stage I will not name them, but every nation that has this type of uh, helicopter carrier platforms with, with or without ski jumps uh, are interested to have a capability uh, to monitor and to have persistent ISR surveillance to protect the ship and the surrounding uh, 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 other ships uh, and perform multi-domain ISR above, on and under the sea. Very well, uh, Taraz. Last but not least, can you share with us some of the performance figures of the Sea Guardian? Uh, its endurance, range? So, the range, you know, it's, 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 it's not the question as you are operating a beyond line of, uh, of sight aircraft. So, the limitation is more, is fuel within the SATCOM coverage. We were able to fly it from North Dakota to England and we had enough fuel to go back. So it gives you just uh, the, cap the range. So the range is, is, really, is really not the issue. What is important is uh, the capability to occupy the airspace, so to stay long on station. So we are talking about 40 hours for a Sky Guardian configuration and between 25 and 30 hours, depending on the number of pods and sens additional sensors uh, for the Sea Guardian configuration. Very well, Taraz. Thank you very much. Uh, merci uh, to have uh, given me this opportunity. Always a pleasure.